About everything. Does he shake all the time? Yes, all the time. Really? All the time. Do you wear like, does he have one of those? It didn't hugging? work. Didn't work. Really? I bought it for him. Didn't work. I sometimes bought him, uh, I buy him like um, CBD chews as well. Yeah. That's supposed to help calm him. It helps a little bit, but. You ever do CBD in the ear? Like let no, it drip in? And... No, I should do that. Um, but yeah, he's, dogs with anxiety. Kona has not, he didn't give a shit about anything. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> he just wants to lay down and eat. Uh, Sav though, and he has. Are there things that trigger him more than others? Like No, just everything. Everything. Mm-hmm. So, hearing fireworks on the 4th of July versus a squirrel chirping in the backyard, both right. are going to equally cause him some yeah. severe anxiety. Yes. Oh, poor guy. Yeah. Josh! Hey, welcome back to our Stupid Rex Sheets of Corbin. I'm Rick. <coughs> Wow, that registered pretty high on the volume scale there. Did it? Yeah, it really Let's see did. if we can make a peek. <laughs> now you're giving my wife anxiety. <laughs> Sam, <sorry. laughs> uh, Today we got a, this is a, a video. Uh, this is called Kapal Dev and the Story of 1983. Oh, very nice so, indeed. You know, that we did the other one, we saw a little speech. Happening. We did. This is going to go a little bit more in detail of what happened in like, cool. the event. So we can be a little more knowledgeable. It. I feel like it's not a spoiler. It's like... No, we, we know that they won. We know they won, and so, we know it was dramatic, and it was more than just an underdog kind of a yeah, win. It, it, it's, it's, and I, when you're watching something like this, it, I think it kind of helps a you. Historical context. Yeah, no, yeah, there's like both ways. If you go in blind, that's cool if it's teaching you, and it's also cool to know and see if they replicated it the right. Yeah. Way. So here we go. <laughs> I mean, the big kicker on this is we know, we know they won. Yeah. Couple of days was one of those cricketers who. Certainly when he became captain, he led from the front, he inspired his team with deeds and uh, he, you know, put up plenty with both bat and ball, a, a really fabulous, one of the great all-rounders in cricket. And there's bowling. Good delivery again from Kapil Dev, cut it back in, might just have the bats. So Vic Marks goes for eight, big trouble for England, the one set this up for eight in the 54 over. Kapil Dev with as much ability as anyone who's played cricket, but mentally strong uh, and, and still is. I can tell you, you meet Cavill now, you listen to him talk about the game, he thinks tough. England went into that semi-final at Old Trafford as, as big favourites. They qualified quite comfortably from their 14 group and on home soil, you, you know, they, they would have been very strong favourites and, and there was a real feeling in the country that uh, England could win their first ever World Cup. Another wicket to a couple there and Alan goes to a two for nine. It was 60 overs in, in those days, and England were bowled out for just over 200. Uh, Kapil Dev got three wickets, and Mahinda Amanath, who people generally remember as a, a batsman, but with uh, his canny medium pace, took quite a few useful wickets in that tournament as well. And England were bowled out for a, a pretty paltry score. Oh! Dang! Last ball of the day, Bob Willis is next up, goes over, and England are dismissed at the end of 60 overs for a score of 230. Cavill got three wickets against England. He was captain that day and obviously did a really good job leading India because England just uh, didn't seem to be in the match at any stage. Given that India had rarely troubled England in Test cricket or much in one day cricket to that point in English conditions, I guess it was a big shot that they losing to them in that semi final. Joe, Casey Bubbles. Three so far back. back. Way back there. Three Tossed back at first, and they sort of just meandered their way to about 200 mil uh, against a good Indian batting line. It was not enough. There you are. That's the England total. 2 1 3 for 4. The Indian reply. Well, it's waiting for the field to be cleared. This, I think, we can confidently predict will be the last ball. And there can be no English recriminations. It will be a tremendous Indian victory. They've beaten West Indies, they've beaten Australia. There's a common misconception about that India side that it was essentially Kapil Dev's team and, and while he did have an outstanding tournament, it really was a team effort. Guys like Madan Lal and, and Roger Binney and Mahinder Amanath who got man of the match in the, in the semi-final and, and the final in English conditions against a team who many thought were the best in the world at the time in the West Indies. They produced a masterclass of adapting to conditions and coming to the party when it mattered. So they'll be happy with a single because that brings up the 100 for India. Hundred on the board, flying out, six and one to Patel. 
1983, the World Cup was again held in England and the scene was set for a third West Indies triumph in a row. They really were the masters of the one day game. They've been dominant Richard for a long time, still West Indies, huh? in his prime yeah, as a yeah. batsman. Uh, they had great pace bowlers that were able to deliver um, you know, devastating blows. Uh, and, and up against an India side that um, many had found perhaps a little surprising that they had got as far as they had done. They certainly were given no chance at all of getting one over on the West Indies. But of course, in a two horse race in the final, anything could happen. Well, that's safe enough. Always bouncing that much, you've got a real good chance of getting away with it, and she can't sure injure did. that. The West Indies were the best team in the world at the time, and they had so many big names that uh, just a, a look at the team sheet would have been quite daunting. But uh, India had some very plucky characters themselves. They, they played pretty well in the uh, in the Caribbean Test series that, that previous winter, and they had an emerging side with lots of big game players who would have relished the challenge. Having said that, he's just given away four runners with a record. This is the danger time for West Indies where Gomes and Richards have to bowl out 12 overs between them. At the halfway stage, India had been bowled out for 183, which would have been a poor score, especially in final. And coming up against that West Indies attack, they really just kind of blinked in the headlights. It, it took a few decent partnerships lower down the order, even to drag them up to that score. And in a 60 over game with you know the might of the West Indies batting lineup, people really would have been forgiven for thinking this could only have gone one way. It's all over, that's the end. 1-8-3 or out. It wasn't a great total. It was something that I guess put them in the game, but the West Indies with their powerful batting lineup, the likes of Desmond Haynes, Viv Richards, um, would have fancied getting over the line and collecting their third triumph. Good shot. <laughs> Good shot. Beautiful cut He's hit that away to within 15 yards of the boundary. And the Indian skipper has done a tremendous job to get back there. Marvellous running catch. And Richards has gone for 33. He was charging through, calling Desmond Haynes for two, but didn't quite get it. It would have landed 10 to 15 yards inside the boundary, and Kapil Dev had a long way to go to make his ground. Kapil Dev famously said, we might not have a winning total, boys, but we have a total we can fight with and fight they did, and the sight of Kapil running back to the grandstand to catch Viv over his right shoulder is one of the great sights in cricket, as is the moment of victory, which was celebrated not just by Indian people here in England, but Indian people all over the world, who must surely that night have had the party of their lives. And that's out, yes, it's all over this time. Lost his nerve, and then Michael Holden tried to swing that straight ball with the legs. I don't know if we can grab the mouth, how delighted he looks. to India. It really catalyzed interest in the game, uh, and especially the one-day game. Really the roots of what we now see is this enormous explosion in Indian cricket in the 90s and, and around the turn of the century. This in many ways was the start of it. And uh, an India has always been a huge cricketing nation, but to win on the global stage, to claim their first World Cup really was a game changer. And it is what helped cricket move from being, I guess, a popular sport to being the only sport that the Indians were bothered about. That's why to this day, Kapil Dev is a living legend, and it is why India and cricket go hand in hand. a severe underdog yeah playing like the behemoth team right so really david and goliath I yeah, guess. yeah that's david a common 
phrase that's used here. It's a, obviously from the Bible. It's big, giant, little man. Yeah. Kind of thing. Yeah. Um, it's almost like, I mean, a much bigger event, but like when the Giants have won, won their two NFL championships. Yeah. They weren't supposed to. Same thing with the New York Mets in 69. They're called the Miracle Mets. They weren't. They came back from just no one expected them to make the playoffs, let yeah. alone be champions. And then I guess the transition of the sport, um, I guess would he, he would be comparable, for those of you who know Major League Baseball, Babe Ruth was responsible for completely transforming the popularity of the game. It was already a popular American game. But he changed baseball to what it is today, where the home run is the thing that people want to see. And he was hitting home runs of to the tune of 40 a season when the most anybody was hitting was 12. And so when he came on the scene, it was tr just transcendent transformation in the sport. And it seems like he didn't have those kinds of statistics as a player comparatively, but the impact that he and this team had on the sport, like he they said at the end. He was apparently an all-rounder. All, yeah, an like all-rounder. He, he could did everything. He could, bowl, he could bat. Ruth could do. Ruth was actually a tremendous pitcher. But, I mean, the, the, the psychology in the nation about the game went. That's, what, that's why I'm making the comparison with Babe Ruth. Baseball went from, like, a really popular game to what it's called now, which is it was called America's Pastime, and it became this completely different mindset for people to watch baseball and you you would watch baseball not just for your team but for the game itself and it seems like that's why remember when we first started watching cricket people were saying this isn't a sport it's a religion yeah and i guess this is when that happened yeah 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 it probably elevated it when yep. you can win on a world stage like that but yeah i'm I'm so excited. I can't wait for this film. Um, I'm so excited to see all their portrayals of... Yeah. Because that one other guy there at the end they showed him, uh, I don't know if it's Bunty who's playing him, but he's a pretty distinct look himself. Yeah. Um, and I like that about the trailer. We pointed that out in the trailer. Yeah. Guy, right he, has, there. he has a pretty distinct look. Um, at second 726, the guy next to Kapal Dev. Um, pretty distinct look. Um, so I'm wondering if it, if that is Bunty. And I, and I like that, like I, in the trailer we pointed out, it, they made it really clear from the trailer that this isn't the the one, the, the couple dev story. That this is that team, team that year. Yeah, and that every one of those team members made a contribution. Yeah, so yeah. I'm pretty excited. Uh, so let us know to the cricket videos uh, we can react to, informational or uh, highlights, let us know down below. Josh! <laughs>